Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to share with you my experience and the experience of the Polish Agency for Entrepreneurial Development in implementation of the innovative program of supporting business in Poland. I'd like to tell you a few words at the beginning on why such a program was needed in Poland and why we decided to implement such a program. In 2007, the program was prepared under the program Innovative Economy, financed or co-financed rather from the European Union Structure Funds. So, the program was being prepared before 2007 and was implemented, in fact, in 2008. So, in fact, there were key reason, two key reasons which decided that that program was prepared in Poland and is still being implemented. First of all, both before the 2007 and still now, uh, the access to financing e-business and startups is still limited. I'm talking here about uh, funds which are not public funds. In 2008, there were a dozen or so venture capital funds on the published market. In 2011, there is already there are already 60 funds like that, venture capital funds. But still, uh, the funds are limited, and the venture capital and private equity sector, which is prevailing on the market, uh, invest about 500 million euro in 2010, including venture capital, which uh, invested about 14 million euros. So it is, these are not big amounts. And what is important is the fact that these funds invest in undertakings and companies in later, more developed stage of development, whereas uh, the startup uh, undertakings and companies still have a very limited access to funding, especially that banks and the financial sector as such uh, are very reluctant to finance such um, undertakings in Poland, and I think that the situation is similar to the uh, other European countries of the world as such. The second crucial reason for uh, these limitations to, to access to funds is limited access to e-services. As the market for e-services was too weak in Poland during this time. So as it, we wrote it in our documents, we aimed at stimulating the supply uh, of access to digital products in Poland, which is supported by the numbers uh, on the slide behind me. In 2008, the market for e-commerce was worth about 2 billion euros, whereas in 2011, it is more than 3 and 5, 4.5 billion euros. The market for e-business this year is 8 Point eight billion euros. So this program was implemented in order to stimulate the development of e-business market in Poland. The program which is being implemented right now was embedded in the strategic documents which Poland had prepared for the years 2007-2013. It was called the National Strategy of Development uh, Strategic Frameworks, which uh, 
uh, entail the, the innovative program, innovative economy. We decided that Poland, Polish economy should develop via innovative uh, undertakings and development of innovative companies. And within the program, all the instruments supporting innovative companies were prepared, as well as uh, supporting institutions in the business environment, like schools, institutions, and research institutions, so that the whole uh, environment creating innovativeness, uh, innovation was supported, so that the synergy effects were created. Within the program, uh, one of the key areas of uh, attaining or reaching the level of innovative economy is uh, the development of e-economy. One of the programs prepared within this priority is supporting e-business. Apart from developing e-business in Poland, the program was also aimed at supporting young, educated people, uh, fresh university graduates who would like to uh, work in business or start their career in business who haven't uh, such an experience and apart from supporting development of services, this uh, program aims at stimulating entrepreneurship among young people. Program. Ladies and gentlemen, supporting the economy program within the EC Access 8.1 within Innovative Economy program is innovative not only in a way that it supports innovative business but also due to the fact that it has been prepared in an innovative way. I believe that it's the first program of that sort in Poland which offers something more than simply financial grants. We offer a whole package um, like a, a training and educational package and uh, we prepared information portal um, run on our website and it's it is obviously administered by our agency and I will tell you more about this website later on um, however this program is so comprehensive also because those entrepreneurs who used our financial help within e-services program also receive educational support and more to the point later on on later stages of their development different programs offered by our agency so through those projects and further projects that will be run later on, entrepreneurs can expand uh, and that also includes expansion to international markets. So now let me present to you more data regarding the program. We allocated over 800 million euro to the program and that funds are either being used or will be used um, in the years 2007-2013 and within this program we've signed more than 2,400 contracts to do with e-business and e-services and that all was worth over 350 million euro and apart from the contracts that have already been concluded the program generated roughly roughly 10,000 projects. We registered so many projects in our database. 
na realizację tych projektów są przez przedsiębiorców składane. Część tych Some of um, the projects uh, were not supported by our agency because they did not meet all of the criteria set within the program or simply because um, our funding is limited. So, however, what's interesting here and, and what stems from our research, um, which is run from time to time, um, and he, uh, I'm talking about research on our programs. Some of the projects which do not receive our funding for one reason or another are implemented anyhow without our help. Very often they use either own capital or the money that they borrow from friends, family or other sources. So they are able to implement their programs anyhow. But anyway, our program was an engine for developing e-business in Poland. 3.5 thousand jobs were created during the implementation of our program and mostly that includes job positions offered to young people. People starting their business, young professionals right after graduation. Um, so it, it's worth noting that this program also um, realizes different aims of our government. We have a problem here in Poland with unemployment amongst young people after graduation. Uh, like the, they, they can, they, they cannot work full time as someone's employees. So through developing a type entrepreneurship amongst the young, we may find the unemployment. Our research shows that around 60% of young people would like to run their own business as a sole trader, for example. So there is a potential which for some reason, usually due to lack of financing, it does not come into life. So now some more figures. I've already mentioned our website. Um, you see the address on our banner here. It's been created as a supporting tool to um, our grant program. As we decided that there is a need um, for more information. You can see the figures on my slide on the screen. And you can see that, that, that we realized the need in the right way. Our website um, generates a lot of traffic. Um, we have a lot of young professionals entering this website. They use it to get more information on e-business in Poland. We have 11,000 registered um, users, 4 million hits. 4 million entries, I'm sorry. Over 56,000 hours were spent by our users on our website. They use it to get knowledge, the most up to date knowledge. Uh, we invite experts uh, in e business. Um, we post the newest publications on the subject. I also believe that it's the best database for uh, e-business events in Poland. The most interesting events are posted on our website.
and the young entrepreneurs use our publications um, regarding the running e-business the, the key um, areas of running e-business so far we've published 60 e-books on the issue and uh, around 60,000 people downloaded them uh, entrepreneurs however may use not only a website and not only the grants offered for startup companies we also offer additional support for example within the e-economy program that's a 3.1 measure and that includes startup incubators and that very often includes financing and generates e-business. Many of our entrepreneurs who received money within this program also used another program that's called Passport to Expert and within this scheme entrepreneurs may receive grants and expand to international markets they may perform market research they can go to trade fair um, set up business meetings so on and so forth people who wanted to open their own company and expand also used other measures offered by us for example the one within which we support those entrepreneurs who wanted to research um, a new product or a new service and further implement it within their business. Um, moreover, people may also use support to implement electronic cooperation amongst companies. That we have to have a three, at least three companies and that's called a B2B support. What are the results of our scheme? The scheme, as I have mentioned, is being has been implemented since 2008. So this is the third year. <laughs> Around 2,400 contracts were concluded. Some of the projects are completed already, so they have been fully implemented. And right now, uh, these e-businesses, e-services are on the market. They operate in many areas, like home business, finance, management, marketing, areas related to arts, culture, politics, the state uh, law, administration. There are various uh, services which hadn't been there before on the market and have now appeared on the market. And many of those uh, businesses uh, have been successful in the market. They are earning profits. And I think that after the support uh, period, which takes place within the program up to three years, all those businesses will be functioning on the market and they will succeed and compete. That can be proven by a partly, partly by the expansion of some of those companies into the foreign markets and their successes uh, on those markets and in different competitions. Some of our beneficiaries have been succeed have succeeded uh, on international competitions, for example, on the competition organized by the Microsoft company. 
These projects also do very well in the world of big world uh, multinational companies uh, operating within the ICT area, for example, Nokia, Samsung, Orange, or the Telekomunikacja Polska company. And they are further expanding. As a continuation of this scheme, and the possibilities, creating possibilities of uh, foreign expansion of our uh, businesses, we are preparing the scheme titled Foreign Incubators, and we want to support entrepreneurs who want to enter foreign markets. Uh, for example, in the US, in the Silicon Valley, uh, we want to implement such a scheme there uh, next year. This is one of the examples for our project, uh, one of our beneficiaries is uh, local governmental uh, SMS directory operating within the e-administration area. It is aimed at uh, informing directly uh, local citizens via uh, mobile phones. And this scheme solves via text messages. This solves uh, such problems like informing about some threats, uh, net also from natural disasters. Uh, it is implemented in cooperation with local forces. I know that many local governments have been using this program in uh, effectively uh, in the moments when certain areas were threatened by natural disasters, for example, like the flood. The scheme Innovative Economy and the scheme for e-business support are one of the programs which are being implemented by the Polish Agency for Entrepreneurial Development. Their innovativeness also involves the fact that for the first time ever, when we are addressing specific needs, we implemented in our agency the possibility to file motions via the internet and file applications via the internet. This solution has been uh, used for the first time in this program and we expanded it on the rest of our programs. And right now we are implementing several dozens of such programs uh, supporting entrepreneurs. All, so all our activities have been digitalized and we are communicating with the entrepreneurs uh, via the website electronically and they can file all the applications via the internet which has been working very well maybe this is not an innovation in a global scale however in our Polish scale it is still an innovation because still not many institutions managing uh, programs of public support are using such a solution as I have mentioned the scheme for e-business support is one of our crucial programs. In 2011, we realized how important it is to focus on startup companies in Poland. As I have mentioned, there is a huge potential among young people who would like to become entrepreneurs and also a huge potential within among women who, on the one hand, are not active on the job market, but under uh, adequate support, they could start acting as entrepreneurs. 50% of women, uh, I'm quoting fresh data here, data uh, of a research which has just been carried out by our agency. As yesterday, we had a 
quite big conference on uh, entrepreneurial attitudes among women. There are a lot of women in Poland who would like to pursue a business activity. And such a support uh, for e-business is also a great uh, example for the opportunities, opportunities for women in e-business. There is a huge group of women who have been implementing these projects uh, under the scheme supporting e-business. And we want to and we will um, do our best to uh, implement such a solutions aimed at uh, company development, especially in the SME sector in Poland, uh, companies which are taking advantage of this potential and these opportunities. We want to use these solutions in when we in our programs. Apart from this, these programs, we are also supporting technological parks and incubators. So we are supporting all the infrastructure, supporting uh, entrepreneurs. The entrepreneurs can take advantage of our single contact points and our network of uh, consultants, consul consulting offices. They can be consulted uh, in the area of pursuing a business activity. So we try to take a comprehensive approach to these activities so that a person who wants to become an entrepreneur and has just decided to become an entrepreneur, uh, receive if they need it. And all our research show that such a need exists so that such a person can receive such a support uh, and so that such a support is completed. To sum up, I think that this program of supporting e-business in Poland is a good example for cooperation between entrepreneurs and e-business and e-government and I think it's worth continuing this program and in the future we will try to uh, also implement and continue such a program uh, within our uh, new budget from the European funds. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation and I think that we have a very little, a very little time for some short questions, remarks, inspirations. You can ask in Polish or in English as you wish. No questions? Okay, Professor Salari. I like this program very much. And I like to ask you a question about uh, young people of uh, what kind of education are mostly involved in, uh, in creating these e-business services. Does it go mostly to engineers, to economists, uh, or to, I don't know, human scientists, uh, people of which kind of education uh, are mostly interested in this program? I'm not sure if I quite uh, if I understood you correctly. Uh, to w what group the, the program is addressed uh, was your question. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, the, the, the program is not addressed to any specific group of, of uh, young people. Uh, so anyone who, ca who wants, uh, uh, anyone who has an idea, have a, idea of, uh, have a project uh, that we can finance, uh, can apply. So there is no specific uh, criteria that we, we uh, select the, the, the people who can. Uh, but the, and, and from the experience I see, because we, we can often talk to the, the, the people who run the project, uh, um, I can see that uh, there, there is a mix of, of, of uh, education 
education uh, as regards the people who uh, applied and, and, and uh, uh, ran the projects. Uh, there, there, there are, uh, in some cases, there, there is a mix of, of, of uh, people like in, in a project where, where there is a social or uh, social media or, or, or kind of uh, uh, or cultural um, or touristic support. So th there are people educated in a specific um, uh, area, and, and and there are uh, ICT specialists. So so in the in the firm in the small firm like uh, two three people mostly this firm are uh, of uh, two three people and outsourcing. Um, and there are people from different different uh, educate with with a different educational background. Other questions? So in this context probably I have the other question about, you spoke about the incubators and clustering of startups and spin-off from, for example, from universities. At this especially very interesting for us at the universities to, have the, to give the opportunity to our students to create startups and spin-offs. So the question is, do you have a special programs for incubators to, to support such initiative internationally? There are some details to describe. Probably I uh, uh, have to, to switch to Polish. It's very important from the point of interest of the people. It's very important. Absolventi, especially wybijając się studenci, zostali w kraju. Graduates and especially outstanding students stay in Poland. Um, one thing be to create incubators and build international clusters as well. But the question is, and that question refers to what Mr. Solari said: Are there any chances that um, the agency would support? initiatives that would attract students um, to go abroad, to dream big. Um. Well, chwili obecnie nie mamy takiego specy specjalnego, specyficznego programu, który by wspierał program e, inkubatory przedsiębiorczości i ich internacjonalizację, czy tych firm, które w ramach tego programu. Nie ma tego takiego programu w agencji, to znaczy, to nie znaczy, że w ogóle takich programów nie ma. Program nie ma takich programów, że program nie ma takich programów, że nie ma takich programów, że nie ma takich programów, że nie ma takich programów, Tworzony inkubatory, like, gdzie um, przedsiębiorcy mogą incubators rozpoczynać bardzo łatwo biznesy, które są prowadzone działania, aby um, zresztą we współpracy z agencją, aby umożliwiać wyjście na rynki zagraniczne. Właśnie mówiłam o tych inkubatorach zagranicznych, które chcemy stworzyć. To jest właśnie this program we want to open our own foreign incubators and, and those incubators will cooperate with academic incubators operating on the market already and that should allow people to go abroad via educational support and information support. And this is a very important issue. There is a need. As I already told you that we have a lot of potential. Um, there is a boom amongst young people to become entrepreneurs. And, and it's, it's, it's not so common everywhere. Not in every EU member state. The young people want to open their own businesses. Other countries, other countries in which people want to work in big corporations to be employees, so to, say, to be employed. So here in Poland we have that chance that we should grab and uh, we, we are trying to design projects that would um, meet such demands. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Students, thank you very much for your presentation and for the discussion.
Then I'm very happy to welcome the second speaker, it's Mrs. Lena Rotz. It's correct, or should I speak in English with roots? Root, excellent. Mr. <coughs> Lena Root graduated from the Stockholm University of Economics. It's something like our university. Uh, she joined the Swedish Agency for Economic and Regional Growth as a head of department for business services in 2009. She collected her excellent professional experience, for example, from the Swedish Export Credit Guarantee Board in Stockholm as first deputy chairwoman of the board. The Nordic Investment Bank Helsinki as member of the board. The Innovation Centrum Foundation Stockholm as a chairperson. The Swedish International uh, Fund as a member of the board. The Swedish Trade Council in Stockholm and the Commercial Bank as director and member of the credit committee. So, this is uh, a part of the list of your uh, positions. Uh, the subject of the presentation is Swedish Business Link, innovative cooperation for development of public e-services for business. The part is yours. Thank you very much for this long presentation, and I'm also very happy to be here in Poland. And I also would like to thank Professor Wojciech uh, Salary, although he's not here at the moment, and also Vinova, who left, and uh, for <laughs> inviting me to this uh, conference. I think it's a very interesting topic, and uh, the aim of my presentation is more on implementation. So how can government agencies work together in order to perceive and get better public services for entrepreneurs in, in our case and directly towards businesses. And it's all uh, really a challenge for public authorities to work together. It's very easy to say the word that you should do it to perform better, but it's more or less like a marriage. It's up and downs and you have to do and to sustain and have to, have to have a sustainable development of the public services and the design and also to involve uh, the companies themselves in the development and production and design of these services. Unless you do that, you will not get anyone to use your services. So you can put a lot of financial resources into investments, but unless it's used by the end users, uh, there will not be any contribution to uh, the growth in the country. So you have to take up all the feedback you get, try to make it into better services and to a better design. So that's the topic of my presentation. And I'm also going to talk now about a project called Verksamt.se, which is really the Swedish business link. And it's... Uh, a project, it's really a strategic project within the government policy for the future e-development in Sweden. And uh, our agency is really an agency to work for sustainable growth throughout uh, the country. We are addressing innovative entrepreneurship and also, of course, regional growth because everything is really happening in the regions. So unless you get them to participate, we will not uh, have a good uh, growth uh, prospect in Sweden. And now when we have the financial constraints for the European Union, it's even more important to address the SMEs. Uh, for example, in Sweden, almost 95% of all the companies are SMEs. We have large corporations, of course, uh, that are well known outside of Sweden. But unless we can get additional growth for the SMEs, we will not actually succeed in promoting growth. Uh, we also have, of course, financial contributions, which we were talking about uh, at the last presentation here. And uh, one example is that we have now been supporting Facebook. They are investing in a big data center at the north of Sweden, in the city of Luleå, and that was a very recent decision made by them. They thought they had to have some kind of investment in Europe and for some reasons, which they know themselves, they choose Sweden to, to invest uh, in their data center, which is actually part of the cloud, cloud uh, development. 
And that, of course, is uh, very uh, uh, succeed, successful for, for Sweden and also for the future growth of that kind of industry. Maybe we can attract more companies to come to Sweden for that. Uh, this is the agenda of my presentation, but uh, I'm just going to start out with some background information. And we have, of course, as all countries, an action plan for e-government. And, uh, of course, Sweden is also part of the digital agenda for the European Union. We launched it recently, and we have a lot of new schemes that we are presenting. Uh, we also have something called the e-delegation uh, for the government, and uh, where actually a lot of different, uh, 17 different uh, government agencies participate. Before, we had one agency that was supposed to do all this work. It didn't work out. They put out a lot of good presentations, uh, suggestions, and uh, also other types of, of uh, innovative schemes, but the other agencies did not adopt what they presented. So now instead, all these 18 agencies are participating in this delegation, and we are supposed to ourselves come up with good strategic projects. We have to invest our own budgets into this. So the government has not put up any special funds for this uh, e-delegation, but uh, we are implementing it through cooperation between different governments. And of course, this is supposed to be more effective development of e-government policies and also e-government services. And uh, before, we had a lot of uncoordinated portals and websites. We had a very low level of usage. Many people did not, uh, were not aware of all the services that the public entities offered to them, and there was no coordination, uh, duplication of material and so forth. So all in all, uh, all these efforts are now being made to make public authorities work better together, and thereby also saving some funds to be able to put into new investments. And we have the budgetary process, which is a yearly process, and therefore it's difficult to have these kind of long-term projects involving different types of authorities. One of the authorities we are working together with, they are funded by fees from the public. So unless uh, they ha should increase the fees, they cannot really invest in new schemes. So we need to find ways of financing, and uh, that's not very easy for, uh, we are, uh, we are then guided by different uh, departments and, and ministries, and they all have their different type of budgetings. So unless we overcome all these uh, efforts and, and problems we have, the financing will not be in place and we cannot continue this project. And throughout the time there have been some difficulties, of course in these times of budget cuts, if we invest together with other agencies, and suddenly they get a budget cut, and they would like to withdraw from this investment. We have, of course, a huge cost for the rest of us to perhaps somehow co compensate for that some of us is not longer part of this uh, uh, investment. So this project is really a cooperation be between three different agencies. The Swedish tax agency, of course, is one the biggest one. We also have the Swedish Companies Registration Office, and they all have a lot of different data to, to proceed. Uh, the Swedish Agency for Economic and Regional Growth, we are really working for sustainable growth in Sweden. And of course, that's a very interesting job, uh, especially in these times. How can we sustain our growth uh, despite the financial constraints we are now facing? Um, but uh, this was really a bottom-up project. It was not uh, an assignment from the government it was really the three authorities themselves deciding we will, we will work together and try to get better public services. And the design of the services should be together with entrepreneurs. So we had to ask the end users what type of services uh, would you like to have and also to test with focus groups and test groups all the time throughout the project. So instead of offering different uh, services on our home pages, we have one page, uh, one common page, which is actually uh, accessed by the term verksam.se, the business link, 
And there you can have all different ty types of tools as well. And one tool is to draw up your own business plan. So before you go to the bank or to, uh, or to establish your company, you can work within this uh, tool to develop your own business plan, and then you can actually show it to those that you choose to show it to, instead of sending it around to everybody else. And of course, you can register your business at one single place. So the former Minister of Enterprise, uh, Maud Olofsson, actually she has now started a company of her own, and he used, she used his website and thought it was quite a simple to, to, tool to, to uh, register her company. And uh, it's also been useful for, of course, uh, all those that have been using it so far. About 50% of all startups in Sweden are now using this uh, website for start up, starting up their business. And it's not only information on the websites, it's a lot of e-services as well. So we have uh, now increasing the number of, of authorities that wants to participate in this website. And uh, fortunately next year we will have like three or four new authorities coming into the project. And uh, also we are using uh, this to, to uh, address the entrepreneurs themselves and also private people that are considering to start up a business, unemployed people, for instance. How can we make them think more about uh, having their company of their own instead of being employed? How can this be an attractive way of finding your own way of, of uh, financing your, yourselves? So, uh, also for the ones who ha are helping the entrepreneurs, uh, there is a lot of advisors, of course, public as well as private, and we're also making the site for them. We're now considering to do another sort of type of, of this uh, website only for those advising companies. And really, when we started out, we said we don't really understand the process of the, of the companies uh, from the first idea you have of a company until starting it, running it, and develop it, and perhaps employ more people, and finally closing down or perhaps uh, selling it to somebody else. So we started off by doing this type of uh, investigation of what is really the different phases and what type of support is needed from the public authorities throughout all these phases, and what type of inspiration do we need in order to to find it interesting to continue, and also to work more closely with our uh, authority. So we have on the website feedback, and we have used that already from the start. It's this black stain here at, at the uh, right-hand top level of the, of the site. And we have got a lot of, of different feedback from companies, which we are now using in producing new products and services. So the co-production and the co-design is very important for us. And it's not only uh, said by word, we're actually using it as a tool. Uh, and for the different phases, we have also used a new type of design. So somebody said that we were trying to impress women. Or <laughs> they thought it was a design used for, for impressing women. But uh, really, it's, uh, we're trying to be a modern uh, look of the website and uh, somebody said it doesn't look at all as an authority. Uh, but uh, that perhaps is also the idea <laughs> that it should be used by those that we are actually accessing with this uh, website. And throughout the, the phases, we are then um, uh, cooperating with different authorities. So all in all, it's information from 70 different public authorities within this website. But we are three authorities that have actually creating and, and production and, and development of e-services here. <clears throat> I'm just showing you some of these faces. And of course, if you are developing your business, it's also a matter of uh, hiring new people, employing new people. And there we are now working all together with six authorities. So six authorities are working more closely together, not only with the website, but also with other types of channels uh, to get out the information that we provide to entrepreneurs and to end users.
And of course also, finally, you have to somehow uh, continue uh, closing down or selling your company. And it's also a matter of sometimes, of course, bankruptcy. How can you han handle that? Uh, in our country, it's not a very good thing to do bankruptcy. In other countries, it's, it's uh, regarded as a merit. But, uh, uh, of course, we have to work with these things as well because uh, we have an aging pro problem in Sweden where a lot of, of uh, owners of companies now are retiring. And what will happen with all these companies? It's, it's a big problem for us. And we have to address this, this question. And the organization is, is quite complicated, but uh, the idea is that we, we sit as we are in different cities, and we work together, and we develop the services together. Of course, we have all different cultures. So the Swedish tax authorities, for instance, they have their culture, and uh, it's not always the same as we have. And, and uh, of course, sometimes uh, people internally in the tax authorities does not understand why so much time has to be devoted to this common project, because they have other priorities, uh, apparently. And uh, therefore, you have to co constantly work on these matters. So if one of the managing directors is, are changing, you have to uh, devote a lot of time to sort of persuade these people that this is a good project. Uh, please continue to put some funds into it. <clears throat> and we also perhaps hope that uh, we will include more authorities in the future. But the different uh, ministries that we are now, uh, well, we have different ministries uh, involved in this, and uh, at budget times, as we have now, it's not so easy to have a common approach on a common project, but different types of budget structure discussions going on. So I would say financing is, of course, a very important issue here. If you would like uh, public authorities to work more closely together on a long-term scheme to provide better services, you need to have some kind of long-term uh, financing in place as well for investments. And of course, you can invite the private sector also to co-invest with you. You can outsource, you can procure services as we do along the, the line. Uh, but at the end, of course, we have to stick to some budget funds to be able to, to go through. And the technical architecture here is really that we have joint services that we develop. Uh, we have also, of course, uh, information on the web page. And, uh, some of it is called My Pages. You have to have an identification number, as we heard before, <laughs> to enter this page. And that's one important issue, of course. And then you can register your business plan. So nobody else can actually look at your business plan. And uh, some people thought nobody would actually dare or want to uh, register their business plan. But so far, we have at least 30,000 business plans in use. And uh, so it showed them wrong, actually. Uh, and e-services, we de develop some of these services together, and also we have our own e-services, which we present through this website. So there's a joint effort, and uh, sometimes uh, we, of course, have to be agree on which type of e-services to publish on this website. Uh, user involvement, that was one of the most important issues here. And that was also something which took a lot of effort to have it not from inside out, but from outside in. Not to think about the authorities, different types of schemes that we normally work with, but to change the whole view of the people working with this project. We have to really give priority and focus on the needs of the end user and to involve them more and more in the production and design uh, we also talk about labs, actually, we are working now with the Stockholm School of Economics to see if we can have a lab on the web page and where people actually can develop their own companies and to get some support from advisors as well when you are doing that. Uh, we also are looking at an example from Denmark, which is, which is called Mind Lab, uh, which is actually within the, the uh, ministries. Uh, and that is really about designing public services. So you also need some behavioral scientists involved, not only legal people and econ economists, uh, economic uh, skills, but also behavioral sciences to understand and design it from the beginning. 
uh, our authority is also working with better regulation. And of course, there, instead of changing things after you have designed the legal framework, you should think about it from the start. How should we design the public services to fit better with the, those that uh, are the end users? And the implementation, which is really done in the reg at the regional level and the local level. So better regulation, we are now working also together with the mun municipalities and the regional authorities to see how can we together perform a better work when designing public services. Uh, and if you are checking on something, maybe you should then ask them from the beginning if they could have a better structure, then maybe you're not calling upon them to check things that often. Um, and maybe you can also diversify the fees depending on how good you are doing. Uh, instead of checking everybody. Uh, in this case, the technical approach was that it should be accessible, of course, with open standards and open source initiative. Uh, you also have the PSI initiative, of course, that you have to make data available for private sector to be able to develop their own services. It was a federated architecture, and uh, we also have distributed the responsibility for the development and the management of these e-services to these three different agencies. So uh, the e-services are provided as portlets and then they are integrated into this web page. Uh, and that, in that way, the end users have access to all the services at one place. And uh, we can also include new authorities quite easily because the structure is done in that way. So it should be easy to do it. And of course, there's also a possibility for the end user to overview all the work is, they have in progress. If, for instance, I have sent in my application to establish a company, I will also see when I sent it in, when I got the answer, and when I got the, the uh, permission to start up my company. And I got uh, okay for the name I have chosen for my company. Before you talked about one door, uh, we, now we talk about no wrong door, and uh, we have developed this website. There is always a lot of regional and local authorities with the same ambition. So instead of inventing the wheel all over Sweden, we said, why not use the information we have provided? And then we link to the regional level and to the local level. So that is what we are doing right now, trying to see how we can link the local level uh, and the regional level into uh, our web page instead of having a lot of structural funds perhaps <laughs> to develop new web pages all over Sweden. And so far a lot of regions think uh, this is okay, some of them already have their own web pages but they will still link to our. Of course the private sector as well is important uh, and branch organizations and such other organizations we work together with. Uh, we will not replace them, we will just be as part of it all and, and we should link to each other. So uh, we have more general information and they might have more specific information about what are the advisors in our region, for instance, that you should turn to. Which type of financial schemes can public authorities offer to you as a company? You can find it at one place instead of having to look at different web pages all over. Uh, to, this year we are putting in some $7 million, but uh, for 2012 we're going to increase this amount even further. We're developing new e-services, and uh, we also would like to look at social media, which, which was discussed before, and how can we go mobile? What kind of mobile services can we provide? Right now we have one service. If, if somebody is uh, trying to sort of hijack your company, you get an email saying somebody's trying to change the names in your, your board. And you are uh, having a very fast access to that information. Uh, we have like 100,000 unique visitors per month. And as I said before, it's a lot of business plans registered. Our plan is also for them to be able to hand out the authority to perhaps to their bank or accountant or something to come into this web page and look at the business plan instead of, so they work together, they can also see all the registrations they have, they have made. And uh, throughout the years, I think we started off actually in 2008, late 2008, so it's not that long we have cooperated, but we are picking up on users. And as I said, business plans created and saved on the 
web page. Um, other projects we are now working on, as I said before, is uh, the regional level. How can we work together with them? We also have a cooperation with the university at Linköping to see how can uh, the local level, the municipalities, uh, what are the possibilities for us working together with them? And we have new.